So I'm just gonna stick this magnet in there. See how many shavings we got in there. Just get it all in there. And yeah, you guys be the judge of that. Tell me what you guys think. No, no shavings in there, none at all. That's why I like using the grease. That's why I like doing it the way I do it. Yeah, and it works. It's all old tricks my pops taught me. Guys, I'm gonna get ready to do this install. This is the truck I was working on the. Uh, worked on the pack brake back here. Um, took everything apart, lubed everything, cleaned everything. It was pretty rusted. Uh, there was a lot of rust in there, in the exhaust, in the uh, elbow. Um, and it was because he had a bad uh, blown head gasket, and uh, it was. A blown head gasket from coolant to exhaust somehow um, and it was blowing coolant out the exhaust so there was no oil in the in the coolant and there was no coolant in the oil anyway so <clears throat> he wanted me to do it um, I told him I didn't want to do it I don't want to mess with it um, but anyway so he took it to a uh, Cummins repair shop by the by our uh, office because he works with me, he's a signal guy and I'm a track guy. But anyway, so I didn't know uh, he actually did have ARP head studs put in. Um, they look like the 625s, um, basically just the cheaper ones. They're not, they don't look like the better ones or maybe they're the 2000s. It looks like it says, I can't really read it. Um, but anyways, I don't know what it, what they put in, but I guess they did put some in. Um, but yeah, so he had this, uh, you know, I messed with that. It's actually the cylinder, the seals on the uh, brake cylinder. So that piece right there, it's just a cylinder, like a piston, and it holds pressure. And so that rod that is right there uh, goes, oh, my fingers are going to get big. Anyways, it goes in and out to actuate the uh, little butterfly that's in that elbow and uh, anyways the seals on those are blown so when you when you lubricate that piston or that rod that goes in between there um, it'll be good the exhaust brake will come on and off uh, when you select the switch um, it, it'll go on and off it'll work but then after that uh, spray that lubricant dries out um, and doesn't hold a seal anymore um, it either sticks sticks shut or sticks open and then you got to lubricate it again but anyway so those seals i told them those seals are blown um and i tried looking up the seals when i took it apart i can't find a part number on the seals and i looked up pack break and uh basically they just want you to exchange it they want they want you to grab that order one ship yours back they'll rebuild rebuild that one and then send it to somebody else but anyways i told them about that so um yeah, so we're just gonna get these gauges started. I'm gonna have to take this off somehow. Hopefully it doesn't have it all super glued. Oh, just stick it on there. So this this is like one of the few dodges that have a clean dashboard, no cracks. And I tend to keep it that way, so Anyways, um, basically, you just start by pulling this, this off, and then uh, I'll end up going in here and pulling these off. These are get these get pretty brittle. Um, when I did another Dodge, um, ended up breaking because this you know Dodge plastic's real brittle. Uh, but yeah, so. Anyways, I'm just going to get started. I'm going to open up all the packages and uh, show you what he purchased. Okay. So that's what he got. Triple gauge. Uh, A-pillar. I already painted it. It was painted black. Um, I used the Dupa color. Uh, 
uh, spray paint vinyl. So this is the paint I used. So vinyl and fabric and I use a uh, adhesion promoter. So there's the if everything else will get out of focus. Anyways, it is a uh, HVP 109 medium gray. <clears throat> so a flexible finish. Let me grab that promoter. So this is the adhesion promoter. It's basically a primer, automotive primer series adhesion promoter. Clear primer improves paint adhesion. Ideal for plastics, vinyl, and chrome. So I don't know about the chrome deal, but whatever. Anyways, and this this number is a uh, CP199 adhesion promoter. Anyways, so I spray this on, and then I spray this on. But anyway, so, so let's get into this. This is the A pillar. This Pro R77007. So, and that comes with the little instructions and the little chingalingis. So, and instructions. So, you ordered a uh, fuel pressure gauge from 0 to 40 psi. Part number on that is R17055 and you know fuel pressure 0 to 40 psi. All the wiring, all that junk. Alright, and then you got the boost gauge uh, 0 to 40 psi. I don't know why I got 0 to 40, I told him to get 0 to 60 because these trucks will will boost up into uh, uh, 38, 40 PSI, you know, pretty easily. But whatever, this is what he bought. R17333, uh, you know, all the wiring, everything. And then he got, this one's kind of beat up, but that's the pyrometer, pyrometer. Uh, zero to 1600 degrees. Part number R17021, so 1600 degree pyrometer. Um, I told him he shouldn't have got the color one, he should have got the all black. But he got the color one because he said he just ordered a package. So he didn't really look into what, whatever. But anyways, it comes with the probe and the wiring, all this junk. Then he got um this is for the boost gauge. Uh it's a R7741. So it's just a little tap, the adapter. So that's for boost gauge, which is right here. And then there's the, the banjo. The banjo is for the fuel bolt. For the fuel pressure, it's R7743 bolt fuel pressure dodge. Anyways, so that's gonna go in there, and then, and then this is the attribute programmer, which I don't really know what all that junk is. Um, R42003. I don't really know what that is. Um, looks like it's got a USB. Um, anyways, I'm going to open this up first. See what the heck this thing is. We'll grab a razor blade. So, make sure safety first always. Cut away from you. <clears throat> so let's see what 
Let's see what this thing says. Attribute Programmer. Evo 2 Performax. Attribute Programmer Instructions. So I guess you gotta upload some stuff. EV2 I guess it's a I guess it's a warning a warning device I guess I don't really know cuz I don't see any I think they messed up but I could be wrong I'll read into this, and then after I install everything and mess with everything, I'll uh, I'll come in here and tell you what the heck this crap's about. But as of right now, I don't know. So, I guess you could, from what I'm thinking, you program it to uh, indicate you or shut down or something when you hit too high of pressure, too high temperature. But hopefully it's just something that they threw in there. Anyways, let me read it real quick and I'll get back to you guys so I'm not wasting time. Okay, yeah, this is for uh, warning, warning indication. So I don't know how they will work. Um, but yeah, I just checked my te text messages. I told them to get zero to 60 on the boost and for some reason he ordered zero to 40. But anyways, um, let me see this. Open this, the boost one first. Oh, okay. So I guess it is, uh, I guess it is acceptable to this, uh, attribute programmer. So, but I don't know how, I don't know how it would work. I'm not seeing any light unless the whole thing flashes or something it doesn't it doesn't say in here how it'll how it works but this one shows a light a little LED light which it might be in there and I just can't see it oh okay yeah it is in there I don't know, I don't know if you guys can see that it's at the very bottom under the word boost anyways so it is there okay I'll have to hook all that junk up <clears throat> and then so I actually have to program all the gauges before I can do anything but I can wire everything up and then take the gauges out program them all with this and then uh, yeah I'll just set up I mean obviously boost gauge I'm gonna set up to 40 psi um, Fuel pressure, I'll probably set it to, I don't know, 15, I'll set it to, tw I'll set it to 18 PSI, um, and then the uh, EGT, the parameter, I'll set it up to about, I'll set it up to 1300 PSI, because that's red line anyways, uh, 1250, uh, 1250, man I can't see these things package sucks anyway so about 1250 degrees um, is getting into red anyways so I hope you guys can see that little dot down there yeah right down there uh, yeah that's that's where the light is the little indicator so anyways I'm gonna get started I gotta get started doing this stuff um, I'll do the programming later I will obviously probably start with uh, start with the boost gauge, do all this crap, I'll run it all in there where it needs to go, inline fuses, wiring, shamor wiring, okay so this goes into a boost pressure switch, and then that will obviously go into there, 
So, anyways, I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna start on doing the boost gauge, uh, or sorry, the uh, fuel pressure. Well, oh, nope, that's the boost gauge. So that doesn't go. There. This one goes here. Oh. Anyways, I'm gonna start with that one, hooking all this up, and uh, go from there. All right, guys. So this is where most people put the vacuum. So the boost bolt whatever so I'm gonna take that bolt out <clears throat> slap in that fitting and then uh, we should be good I'll, I'll run the sensor the sensor will be up here I'll probably run the lines around this way and along the fuel lines and up the fuel lines and then tuck it up here run it down and then I'll run it back into here for that and That's just a 10 millimeter head bolt, hex bolt, whatever you want to call it. That out. <clears throat> I got some Teflon tape around this and we'll just stick it right in there and then I gotta find a socket for it. It feels about a, like a 9 16 okay. <clears throat> and maybe a 5 8 15, I guess. So, yeah, 15 millimeter. I'm just going to snug it. You don't want to do it too tight because who knows what material this is made out of. It's some type of zinc. So, you just want to snug it down. Right there, just give it like a another eighth of a turn. So that's in there. So then again, I put a little Teflon tape on this on the sensor itself. So I'm just gonna screw this in. I don't know how the heck I'm gonna tighten that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. Either way, whether I put that on first or I didn't. Yeah, let me, uh, let me try to find a wrench or something for this junk. Hopefully I don't have to make a tool. Sometimes you do. So, it's about a 11 16 17 millimeter, um, and I got this uh, three-quarter inch wrench because it is brass, a brass fitting. I'm not going to tighten it that tight. So it does fit, but this is a, a wrench I cut to adjust injectors. Or sorry, and I used to adjust... Um, what did I use this for? Oh, I think I had to replace injectors on my uh, 99 uh, 24 valve. But anyways, I'm just getting in here and turning it little by little. So, one of those little claw foot wrenches, uh, socket things probably would work a lot better, but I don't have any of those for some weird reason. Because I don't ever need them, and then when I do need them, I just improvise. So, anyways, I'm just getting in here and just going to snug this up. Uh, like I said, it is, it is a brass fitting, so you don't want to overdo it anyways so that's probably that's probably it that's all I'm gonna go on top of the fuel 
fuel bowl. So, I don't know if you can see it in there. So, that's the sensor right wherever my hand is. Right there. So, that was the only uh, banjo that it fit. So, I guess that's fine because, it, you know, it's coming fuel. Let me back out real quick. So, fuel's coming out, going into the filter. And then coming up the filter, filtration system, and out. So you're going to have the same PSI here as you would down here because it's coming out. Um, I right, so I'm going to be drilling on that second hump back there. That second channel, the rear bank, rear channel, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to tap in. I'm going to tap in about right here, right on top of this hump, only because all this flow is flowing this way, so it's going to hit the pyrometer here, and this flow is flowing this way. Um, this this number three is going right, right against the pyrometer, um, and because these rear three cylinders are always the hottest cylinders because the air intake, you know, is basically on the number two cylinder. So your coldest air is going to be one or number two, then one, then three, and then four, five, and six are always the hottest. So you always want to put it on the hottest, the hottest side, which is going to be this side here. Um, Cause like I said, the intercooler, the intake comes in right at cylinder, basically cylinder uh, two. So I'm just gonna. Center punch this junk. So that I get a nice hole. And then what I'm starting off with is if I can get it. Did not expect this. Anyways, so I'm going to start off with an eighth inch, eighth inch drill bit, and then I'm going to step it up to a uh, 730 seconds drill bit, and then from there I'm going to go to 5 sixteenths drill bit. These are all just titanium coated drill bits, nothing special, and then um, what you should use, the closest that you can get uh, for the 8th inch NPT is in 11 30 seconds. So this will be my final bit, drill bit. I'm going to drill it uh, 11 30 seconds and then uh, take an 8th inch NPT. So it's not an 8th inch tap, it's, it's NPT National Pipe Thread or whatever they want to call it. So it's an eighth inch MPT, and then that'll that's this side of the thread. Then I'll thread this into here um, with some anti seize. Um, but basically, I'm going to be drilling it with some grease to collect the shavings. Uh, so this way, the shavings don't go down in there. And then once I'm final with my drill bit, the last drill bit, I'll uh, stick a little pencil magnet in there and try to get up the rest of the shavings. So. Uh, a little grease on there, and then just run this through.
five bits done. Next step up. Even if, even if you gotta use a bunch of grease, just use grease. It's life easier for everybody, for the vehicle you're working on, for whatever. I'll sh but you can see the grease. Hopefully, you can see. Grease catches a lot, a lot of the shavings. So don't be afraid to use a lot of grease if you can. And definitely a sharp bit. Um, and just I'm not pushing any pressure. I'm letting I'm letting the drill do all the work. So. So, just keep going, just step it up. It's hot, it's hot. About 104 out here. We're outside in the garage. It's Probably a lot cooler in the garage. So I'm just swapping out drill bits. So just keep on going. use it. Use what you can. You don't want that stuff getting down in there. You know, and you don't, you don't really need cutting oil either because the grease will get hot and it'll act like a cutting oil. See all, all the shavings. It's good, good old tip my pops taught me. He's an old school machinist, so he used to drill into do whatever he used to do. I don't know. Sometimes he wasn't even allowed to tell us what he was doing. So again, swap out this bit. You can use a, a magnet to keep all the shavings. Another cool little trick I learned from the pops is just wrap your glove with, or uh, wrap your magnet with a glove or a plastic bag or something, and then that way it's easier to clean up. You can just get all, get all that off. I'll show you. I'll show you on the rag. Hopefully, hopefully you can see this. But then you just take the, the glove off from the magnet, if it'll come off, and then boom, 
You ain't got no crap all over your magnet. So anyways, just do that a couple times. Clean all this crap up. Just go like that. Boop. You know, obviously there's grease on some of this shavings, but your magnet stays clean. Uh, another little trick that Pops taught me. It's all about learning. If you want to learn, you'll learn. If you don't want to learn, you ain't ever going to learn. Anyway, so we're going to the final, final drill bit size. Put some more grease on it. Grease, grease is cheap. Turbo's not. So, again, Clean it off. It's a little bigger. Some more crap on there. Where's the magnet? Where's this magnet? Get some of this crap out of here. See how many shavings we got in there. Just get it all in there. And yeah, you guys be the judge of that. Tell me what you guys think. No, no shavings in there. None at all. That's why I like using the grease. Spit all off. And just some anti-seize it's some denso anti-seize um, from an o2 sensor so i should have grabbed a wrench So you don't want to tighten it too tight. You just want it pretty much as snug as you can. It's a half inch. So if you start cranking down on it too much, then what could happen is you could stress the exhaust manifold. And then stress the exhaust manifold, and you can crack the exhaust manifold. But usually because it's a circular hole, you won't. So I'm just going about about 20, 20 pounds, 20 foot pounds. Then, then we run this thing in. Make sure you don't lose this little grommet right there. So I'll stick that in there. Start threading that junk in. Oh, how far they want you to go in with this thing. Gonna go down to a. I guess where it's bottoming out. I guess it's touching the other side of the exhaust. So I'm gonna straighten this to where to where I want it. Which I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna run it just like that. I can snug this down. Which I believe is a five eighths. Nope. Nine sixteenths. I lied. Keep mind you guys. So just want to snug this down. It's about the same, 15, 20 foot pounds. Nothing crazy, which is why I'm using these little stubby wrenches.
just clear all the drilling tools and all that crap off. Man, this camera's a pain in my butt. Hopefully you guys got all that. Hopefully you got most of it. So, I tapped it, running it through, did it all with the drill. Hopefully you guys saw that. So, now I'm just making sure the threads are clean. So they feel pretty clean. This thread's in by hand. Like I was saying, I don't, I don't like to go all the way in and all the way down with the tap because then when it goes all the way in and then you try to back it back out, you're recutting threads and keep a clean rag. So again, we're gonna stick this in there and see how much went in there. If anything, stick it back wherever you can go. As you can see, there's just just some dust, just some light dusting, which is good, which is nice. Probably that was probably what was in the threads. So, test fit this junk. Yeah, threads in nice. So the NPT is a tapered. I don't know why they call it NPT, but anyways, it's a tapered thread, so it goes, you know, whoop. It goes wider as you tighten it, so it crimps down. So I'm just gonna get some some anti-seize junk. Put it on there. All right, guys, it's hot out here. Anyway, it's got the pyrometer, the EGT probe hooked up, the wires connected under here. This weather stripping is gonna go. Hide all that. Got that one running down into here. I'm gonna try to find some wire loom in the backyard to wire loom this so it's not so obvious. And then maybe wire loom that wire. Anyways, the way there, how I got it twisted, the wire twisted, was I just stuck the connector in into the vise, ran the wire this way, hooked it into a drill, and brrr, spun it, spun it, spun it, spun it. Totally was really tight, and I pulled on a little, pulled on it a little bit, and then spun it again, and then let it go, and then um, you'll get you'll get that type of chingy. Um, I did one real tight and one real loose, so that I can tell which one is which. So the tightly wound one is the fuel pressure, and not so tightly wound one is. Uh, the boost gauge and then obviously the blue one and then I had to run it in I didn't want to do all this on video but I just used a snake a electrician snake and then uh, he already had a bunch of wires running up and in here for uh, his uh, exhaust brake he's got an amp and he's got some other crap so it's pretty tight um, anyways, so I ran the wires up here. Um, as you can see, you got a tight, tightly wound one, loosely wound one, and then the EGT one. So, now I'm going to get in here and start tearing this off and uh, start doing the gauges. Uh, get all the wires ran up to there, get that all done. And then uh, I'm going to go in the house for a little bit, get cool, uh, cool down a little bit, and I'll read this junk and I'll bring all the gauges in and I'll, I will set the gauges. Um, probably don't even need to set the gauges because they're pretty much, I guess EGT I could set um, for like 1300 but I mean it's already dummy proof because it's got the, you know, it's already green go, yellow, slow, red, you're dead. Anyways. Um, and I guess fuel pressure, I'll we'll go look up uh, what they recommend fuel pressure to be set at. Um, I guess I could set it at a low setting. Mm, I don't, I'll have to look into it, see if I can set it at a low. So I'll probably set it, if I can set it at a low PSI, like a low pressure warning, um, I'll do like 5 PSI and then maybe do a high, you know, do a high maybe 18, 15 PSI. Um, so maybe 15, 17 PSI, and then do like a 5 PSI. 
But anyway, so I'm gonna take the inside apart. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna button up all underneath here so I can be done under here. Okay guys, uh, all under here is uh, done. Just making sure you grab all your tools, anything you left here, anything you left up on the cowl. Um, all the crap that I had over here, drill bits and stuff. Anything you leave, just make sure it's all out. So, I think we're pretty much done. This is his tuner. It's a pretty wild tuner. And then, you know, just put this back on. As you can see, uh, you can see those wires and this wires. I'm going to leave those like that. And then I just used a little wire loom, which I found over there, out in the backyard in the barn. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm done under the hood. Alright, All right, guys, I'm out of breath. Dehydrated. Anyways. Got the gauges all in, um, as you can see, they're all good. I'm actually going to trim this right here so it sits more flush. Um, they don't come on with uh, oh, the end of this beast. Oh, geez. This, guy, this guy sits so weird, man. It's like so laid back, but then so up front. <laughs> Anyways, so pretty dark in here. So Anyways. Ooh. So as you can see, we got about 10 PSI. Fuel pressure, boost, nothing, EGT, it trickles up. Um, what you were able to do with that uh, program, which I ain't got time to mess with all that. It's like basically like tuning a car. Anyways, uh, yeah, basically you just like tune them. So you can have them be more responsive. You can have them be less responsive. Uh, you can have them be brighter, you can have them be dimmer, but then, you know, you can just mess with the bright, lower, and dim on this. Um, but anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. This, this is just how it has to sit. It has to sit over the old one. And if I pulled it out more than the old tweeter back here pop this down more so I couldn't get it to go I couldn't get it to come towards me more and I can't get it to go down anymore because it's basically touching on this and I still have to put the mat on the dash mat but anyways as you can see dashboard's still intact I mean, nothing happened so I'm just gonna trim this little tweeter real quick to uh, accept this, um, I'm just gonna cut it with a razor knife or razor blade until. Uh, and he's, he's out of fuel or low on fuel, but. Anyways, I'm just gonna go uh, take this for a test drive real quick, make sure these gauges all work, um, and see what they do as I'm driving it. Okay, quick little video. truck rolls so much coal it's kind of ridiculous so boost works or fuel pressure boost works well that's fuel pressure Tape, but and he's out of gas or out of fuel it's gonna be it for this video guys uh, it's a long video gauges and wire wiring in general is kind of a pain in the butt because 
he had a bunch of, I guess there was like an alarm system and a factory alarm system, but they were all removed. And then he has, you know, uh, a pack brake. So you got the pack brake, and then he's got fog lights. Then he's got his trailer brake controller over here. I don't know why, because your clutch is over here and the e brakes over here, but whatever. Usually, usually you'd want to put them here, kind of where they're out of the way. Um, but whatever. Not my truck. Anyways, I'm gonna go for a drive. I gotta open the gate, and uh, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, do what you guys do. Uh, 